Wow, that is so nice to see you all. I killed Elvis, Christina, so lovely to have you in my linen closet. But hey, it's just one of those things. Julia's got some meetings today, and this is kind of my little booth that I've recently re restructured after doing a hundred consecutive streams every day on YouTube with Stardew uh, Valley. That was what it's called, Stardew Valley. I'm, uh, I, I thought I'll, uh, I'll split my time between here and Twitch. So it's been, it's been nice. I'll do another video on that on my personal channel on how that went and what that was like for me. And also I'll check in on, speaking of the subscription tiers and all that, I'll do a little deep dive into my YouTube analytics uh, for July, for like for this month, because it's kind of nice. I think I did the last one last year and so much has changed it's really nice to see those two in comparison and i like to do this once a year so that uh, kind of as a as a historic thing to to go forward and see where where, where were you this time last year and where are you where are you heading where you're going it's very interesting to to have a look at that and um so yes that's that's my plan and so in so doing after these streams i, I, I put some cables down that are now going proper way so i can now go and uh, sit here on a more comfortable chair it's all not quite quite held together with a piece of string. It's all a little bit, you know, a little bit more nicely cabled. And uh, so, yes, that's that's what I what I did. And this is kind of the first stream I'm doing with this new setup. I've been in here for recordings already, and uh, but with the new kind of cables and through the wall and above the window and all that, that's all um, that's kind of a new thing. So let's just see how it goes. As long as you can hear me and as long as you can see me, I think I think we're all good. <laughs> So I want to do, I've been fiddling with Unreal Engine for for the last uh, few days. And yesterday, I don't know if you were aware of it, there was a sale that ended on the Unreal Marketplace. I had a, some items for 50% off and I was going to spend about $160 there. Decided not to do that because I thought, hey, that's just going to be... That's just that's just so much money. I, I think you know there's a couple of products I don't really need to buy, but a few I thought were quite interesting. And one of them, two of them, I want to have a look at today. One of them I bought yesterday. Thought, hmm, not actually that impressed with it. So I bought another one this morning that might do the same effect. I don't know if I've told you this already. Let me just um, fire up uh, Unreal Engine here, and and get going with that. Actually, this can probably be closed, can it? Yeah, this is not really what we need anymore. There we go. Uh, let me show you my desktop. So uh, yes, Unreal Engine. There's uh, something I've been talking about already. Well, that's that's kind of me as well, but that's what, not what we want to see either. Just the test here. And um, there's something I've talked about uh, recently. Uh, well, recently, I suppose it was last year. And it was uh, how I could create a little scene builder thing that would be filled with content and users have an easy way to pick a character, change the character, put a character in position, and then walk with the character into some kind of a background set and then take still pictures of the character. And for that, there's two things that, that were one thing that needs to be, that needs to happen. And it's the option to export screenshots from the thing. So I don't want this to be something as difficult to operate as Das Studio. I would like for this to be something that is easy to pick up and fun to use. And I thought, well, you know, that's kind of an idea I have. I don't know if it's going to become reality, but a step in that direction is this is a is a thing called photo mode. And we know that from games. You play a game, you press a button, time freezes, and you can fly around in the scene with your camera and then position the camera and click a button and that exports a high resolution screenshot of what you currently see on on the screen and that is then something people can share or turn into a story you know add speech bubbles to it and then you have a comic book that sort of thing and i thought that's what i'd like to try my hand at and uh, i've shown you in previous videos how how i can put scenes together and walk around that the walk around an environment we buy but the new thing i'd like to test out today is this photo mode thing so i've got something here i believe is this one that's kind of my the project I thought I'm going to get started with. That's a Sinti set in which I've rejigged the the generic, the static mesh, attached a skeleton to it, then I believe retargeted the skeleton with something uh, that then makes animations available on that character. And this is kind of what comes out, I think. Can I do this? I think so. 
and then if I attach my game controller to it I believe I can go and press F11 whoops there we go F11 and um, don't know what that message is uh, would I like to reopen that air I don't know yeah yes yes I think I don't know Unreal Engine that well <laughs> but if I get prompts like oh that uh, no we don't actually need to open that thanks for the thanks for the offer Unreal Engine I don't think we need that so that's what I've done this morning and I might go through this uh, later today uh, again uh, so this is the scene that I bought from the Sinti marketplace recently and it's kind of the demo level with which we can then use a character that comes with the pack or any other character for that matter including DAS characters and then retarget these these characters and then make them walk around so my idea is to let people do that position their character for like you know this is the actual scarecrow that's on the on the thing here i've taken the same character and just animated him which is awesome that that's that that's actually possible and then let people say okay you stand here then maybe pick a button walk another character into place and then press a button so that you can then take a high-res picture of this scene and that that functionality is possible and there's products out there that can do that and i'm going to have a look at two of them today so this is what i've made this morning and that's that's cool but certainly right now what i'm having huge difficulties with is turning that product that i'll show you in a moment into something that i can then uh, turn bring into my project like this started out as a regular third person uh, demo project of course and then i do some magic stuff to it and then you know i can i can go swimming which is which is really cool but what i can't currently do is put that other product that i bought into this product because I, I don't have the right knowledge for that yet but that's kind of the plan that's my demo project and i like to use this and have several characters in there and so that's kind of my, my big idea and maybe if we chip away at it perhaps it'll become reality one day i'll go out of this and i'll leave this project open actually and I'll open another one that's not actually that easy with unreal I, I can run two projects at a time um, but let me walk you through how unreal intends for us to use those two projects so I'll, I'll go into my unreal engine launcher here that kind of minimizes and under here under my library I find not only the engine and my recent projects down here I find the items that I bought so bought or obtained for free that sort of thing and so this is this is where they are and some of them if my stream deck would work I can totally zoom in and show you this but my stream deck's kind of not it's kind of disconnected here so I can I maybe I can show you these uh, over here there's a couple here there's I can either install a plugin to the engine that's what a what a plugin is that just gets installed in a little subdirectory and then I can also add something to an existing project but not all content allows me to do that like this one here uh, if we see that now actually I have to go here uh, so I can add something to a project but some of them don't let me do that some of them I have to create a new project for and the photo mode thing is one of those and depending on what uh, how it how vendors make their products available it uh, makes it a little bit more difficult so add to project I can just click that and then pick a project um, that I'd like to add that to and then it just installs the content into that project no matter if it's open or not and then I can use all the stuff that comes with it but with stuff like the like the um, like the photo modes two of them I have photo mode this one here ultimate photo mode and photo mode I can only create a new project it's kind of a lengthy process and I've done that already and these are then migratable into my own projects so I'll go and just scroll back up here and open ultimate photo mode v2 that's the one that um, that that's one of the projects in fact I'm going to put a link into the chat here photo one there we go that's the link to uh oh no actually that should have been 
should be in my Twitch chat. If you if you type exclamation mark, oh, there we go. It's that, that's it. That's the one, the uh, ultimate photo mode version two, and that is one that was on sale yesterday. So I got it for seven dollars fifty, which is nice, uh, but it's you know it's it's not as awesome as I thought it was going to be. Both of these come with a little demo project, and that's that's kind of nice. So it has uh, it literally. You can just play it. And there are instructions to that uh, here as well. Uh, they've just they haven't uh, built a specific level. They have just you know made this available. This is the default level for the third person project. And if you press a button on the keypad, this comes up, and that's really cool. So I can now go back and forth, and I can also go around the characters somehow. I think this works better with the with the mouse yeah there we go with the mouse and keyboard it does actually work just like the regular unreal controls and then i can go and say take a shot which is nice but i can also do other things so i can adjust the whoops there we go that's where that where that shot is so i can open that now and these are some test shots that i've that i've made there and they are i don't actually know what resolution that is but let's uh, let's examine that if we file info, there we go. What is that? Is it, oh, it's 1920 by 1080. So I had hoped it's going to be a little bit larger. I'm sure that can be configured, that it takes a 4K screenshot or whatever, 12 million, uh, 12 megapixel screenshot or whatnot. So it does that. And apparently there's also a photo browser in this. I haven't quite found that yet. There's depth of field, which I can adjust. Don't quite know how to focus. But you know that is possible. I can also adjust the contrast of my picture, so that's that's quite nice too. Or the color temperature. Perhaps this is a bit uh, much down here. I can give it a tint, and I can give it some saturation. And it also has the it has the camera framing on there as well. That's that's quite nice. But other than that, I I don't maybe I haven't quite worked out how to how to use it all. Because it doesn't, it always centers around my character. So what I'm missing about this is that it's not letting me fly around the scene like I'm kind of used to from a 3D environment. It also is one of those things that these motion blur effects, while I'm making the adjustments, I think that's a little bit ugly. Actually, I don't think, I don't think that's very, that's nice. It looks more like a mistake. It's it's very possible that I can get rid of that, but I don't have enough knowledge for that yet. One thing I did find nice about this product, though, is that over here under presets, I can have uh, kind of grouped settings for ready-made effects. And the little thumbnails, they give away how my picture is going to look like. It doesn't really, it doesn't really make a massive difference right now because I don't have a colorful uh, background or colorful scene that I can play with. So that you know, if I had something with with color in my scene, I could probably we would we would be able to see this better. But alas, I do not. But I had I had another button, and then I'm back in my scene, and I could reposition my camera. But I thought you know, for seven fifty, it is you kind of get what you pay for. So it's you know, you press a button, you you then adjust your shot. Oh, there we go. I can actually go and move my camera around somewhat somehow and get away from the character. Maybe I just don't know how to control this very well. That is possible. <laughs> it's my it's literally my first time I'm playing with this. Where is the character? Is he behind me? I don't know. So anyway, I thought I'll try and implement that into my farm scene and it wasn't quite working for me sadly so i don't really know how to how to properly do it i had assumed it's a bit like just a drop-in but there's a fair amount of, of coding to do so yes that's the first one and so i bought that yesterday played around with it today and i think so yes you can't save your own presets you can he gives instructions on how to do that maybe we can have a quick look in the code for that this is it here, photo mode PB sub widgets. So there's things for image thumbnails and the option slider. This is all customizable. Is there also demo? Is that, is that part of it? 
no that's just the the regular third person template so yeah these are the things that he gives you to customize and uh, he does give instructions as well on a uh, that's on the product listing actually there's instructions how to how to apparently do it but i just couldn't really make uh, head or tails of it so um but anyway i thought maybe i'll uh, i'll i'll give you my impressions on that and i also thought christina actually that uh, it might be i might write a quick review about it and i thought perhaps i'll do this on 3d scrutiny i've got a little trello board here that i can share with you I don't know if it's public or not. Maybe I won't share it with you. But I don't know if it's actually public or not. Maybe I need to make that. Maybe I need to invite you to that. Can I do that over here? Create, create team. Because these are the things that I was planning on writing anyway. And I thought maybe I'll do that on 3D Scrutiny if that's okay with you. No matter if it's then live or immediately or if the site's not quite ready. We have a little bit of content there. I thought, you know, maybe that's a cool idea. But I was going to invite you to this Trello board anyway. Invite, there we go. Uh, that uh, hasn't logged in recently. I don't even know these people. Or maybe I'll, I'll invite you to that later. <laughs> I don't actually know how to do it on Trello. But then, you know, we can keep track of what's what's where and this is what I've planned and then I can put it into progress and in review and if it's live. That sort of thing. Uh, yes, so this is the product. And from the description and the reviews, it looks fairly decent. And perhaps there's a way uh, that I can make it do what I would like it to do. So this is yeah, apparently the photo viewer. I haven't found that yet. It's apparently in there so that inside the game, people can press a button and they can have a look at the photos they've taken. So that's another feature that I thought was cool. I just, I just don't know where that is or how to make that happen. And then he goes and gives us instructions. And I've, my, my, one of my ideas was, if I can't get this to work, I can always contact him and ask him, hey, can you help me implement that? Yeah, so these are the instructions here. Migrate photo mode folder, done that. Open project settings. And oh yes, this is, this is, uh, this, I, I didn't know what he meant by that. Uh, under the project settings, we're supposed to copy all the actions relating to mapping into my project. And my issue was that I didn't have two monitors. I, if you, you, Unreal Engine is always f kind of always full screen on one monitor, but you can't have two engines side by side on the same monitor. You really have to have two monitors for that. And I don't have the setup for that. So it's difficult to, to bring up one and then do copy and paste. That's that was, that was difficult. And um, so that's a bit cumbersome. And then the, most of the rest, I, I didn't even understand what, how, how to do that. So. <laughs> That's that's basically that. But yeah, so it's kind of I think I'm going to give it 3 stars because it was cheap and it does kind of deliver. It's just not very elegant and a video tutorial or a slightly better tutorial would be much appreciated. And then yeah, written review, a quick video about it just just uh, one of the things that's missing also from this product I find is whether well, this is this is a showcase here. Maybe we can Oh, that's the showcase. Perfect. Let's have a look at that. Showcase ultimate photo mode i didn't find that earlier i found a youtube video for the other thing but not for this one maybe this this would have kind of sold us there we go you can uh, you can stop it midstream and that full camera movement i don't know how to do that so i just haven't found the right buttons i guess focus button i was looking for that i didn't find it it's also not really described which is a shame focal length viewer yeah so it's kind of you know the functionality is there it's just the implementation isn't isn't fantastic and it certainly isn't drag and drop i thought you know tick a box have that functionality in your project it's not quite like that but there we go so then i thought okay um maybe there are other products like that on the unreal marketplace and there are and I found one that I'm very impressed with, and it is so big, in fact, that it's its own uh, project. So I bought that as well. It wasn't on sale. It was, uh, I believe, it was. It was much more expensive than that. It was 
have I got it somewhere? I bought that as well. This is this is not it. Uh, photo mode. It's just called photo mode, I think. There's seriously there's so many, so it, it goes to show that this is a that this is a feature that many people are interested in. Photo mode. This one here, twenty four ninety nine. And this comes with a YouTube trailer that really has kind of sold me on it. But I'll show you, rather than showing you the trailer, I'll show you how it works because it's seriously, it's seriously cool. It's, it's worth its money. And this is very elegantly uh, implemented. Let me put a, whoops, put a link into the thing from here. That is actually photo, photo two. There we go. Now I've got myself twice there. <laughs> very funny. And I'm going into into oblivion here. That's cool. Every every three seconds. This is a cool effect, actually. <laughs> well, maybe the universe is going to break in a minute, so I might I might just go and uh, you know quickly go back over here, <laughs> and I'll go and open that project. Yeah, just open that in here, and that works the same way. So it's also it can't be add it to an existing project you have to create your own and then and then you have to migrate this and this one's just called where was it polygon farm photo mode there we go all right let's test drive another one and then the third project i want to have a look at today is something i've not even looked at that's called dynamic skies something along those lines so i thought this was this was funny already he gives you uh, he gives you instructions inside the level so you have to go and oh was it it's supposed to be a oh, photo oh okay let me go and uh, give you that oh do you know what because i typed photo one if you type exclamation mark photo two it should give you that other link sorry about that christina well remembered well spotted there. Yeah, so this is this is the level we'll explore in a moment. And he gives you these instructions in here. So you can go and focus on that and, and just read what he's written here, how to use this thing. And then uh, there's other, whoops, there's, um, there's other tips like here, additional info. <laughs> That's, I thought that was a fun touch and you can even read these things while you're playing the level so I thought that's that's really nice and the level itself the demo level itself is quite impressive I must say so let's go and do that play it in full screen I also don't exactly remember the the buttons that I need to press but you can I believe shoot things and then they explode and i think i mean you know while that's a cool effect what's even funnier is that you can once when you do that uh, if i find the correct button oh yeah this is the photo mode here this is the top shoulder button you can do that while things are exploding so if i shoot at this and mid explosion i can now go and see how that effect happens so i thought that was very cool and it has kind of familiar controls mapped on the on the keyboard and i can now go and and frame up my shot and i thought now that's super elegant that is really nice and then i can keep uh, i can press a button and let let time move on really oops see if i can aim at that like maybe so no maybe like that perfect stop time and look at that explosion in depth also it doesn't completely stop time it just slows it down dramatically that's like super hot oh hello i'm not sure how to pronounce your name kato kato flelu cut ka I, I can't i can't pronounce it let me try again <laughs> Kartof Kartofelal 10. There we go. Kartofelal. Very nice to see you. Welcome to the stream. Yes, Christina, I thought so too. This is super impressive. I really like that. And that's the kind of photo mode I was looking for for my project. There's there's a lot of stuff that you can do that you can adjust and many of these things i haven't quite figured out yet, but we can always have a go. So there's of course the depth the field of view 
that's nice there's the view role which is awesome if you wanted to make portrait type screenshots so that's to increase the resolution there let me just go focus on maybe my man with the with that exciting stuff in the background here i've seen this implemented in dead or alive where you can do this with the shoulder buttons you can literally go and put your picture into portrait and then just rotate it and that makes you a really large uh, portrait framed picture I just it's difficult to frame it up so uh, I maybe there is a way to go and implement this in a way that makes framing a little bit easier or just have a uh, kind of a camera cage like a camera aspect ratio that you choose and then have unreal engine export this at a higher resolution higher than uh, screen resolution so that's view roll the height can be done with the with the shoulder buttons here there's also image quality that's exciting I can make it better or worse oh i see that's exciting literally turn it to 200 percent that's nice maybe we'll leave it there hide the player oh i see you can get rid of the actual character if you just used him to frame up that shot and even post process absolutely yes let's have a look at that so depth of field aperture bigger smaller and focal distance that hasn't worked for me earlier when i tried it out that's one of those things that should be obvious it might be because my project settings aren't set to as high as possible i think he does make a mention of that we might look into this in a moment so color management contrast very nice saturation gamma and contrast both implemented gain even i like it i really really like it then there's the tone mapper haha <laughs> phenomenal i mean seriously amazing to to go and play with all these values and have them implemented in such a way that you can just go and pick this up and just have a look what super sharp mode my goodness post-process filters vignette absolutely amazing very nice I mean it's just the values are there in the engine it's just how do you how do you expose them I think this is this could be this is exactly what I'm looking for grain intensity look at that encoder is probably struggling as you crank up the grain but you can give it film grain easily that is nice fringe intensity and pick a filter that you like so filter presets in addition to what you've just what you've just added here so that's that's groovy sketch oh okay interesting sketch <laughs> shades of gray indeed yeah trip man underwater okay nice and then last but not least well let's let's pick something like uh, like a lomo and uh, maybe like sepia sepia is nice capture screenshot boom screenshot has been captured it's that is hard coded he says there's a way you can pick your own folder of course but really nice right i thought so too christina that was very much worth the money so i'm super happy and it looks like this is the other thing i'm always looking at when i buy products especially on marketplaces that allow you to leave comments like on unreal you can leave people can ask questions and they um, they can leave comments and on his youtube video he has quite a few comments that he's always answered so i'm always looking at those types of things if a developer doesn't really engage with the community or with the audience that is that's not usually a good sign so yes i'm, I'm super happy about this he does make a mention of the fact that I think it's over here in that custom safe directory no that wasn't it it was it in tips and tricks I believe was it here no that's filters I think tips and tricks was over here additional info that's it whoops I 
didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that. Uh, rated. So email for support. Very nice. That is also not what I was looking for. It's just nice to know that it's there. How to use. I think it may be in here. Supports gamepad and keyboard. Maybe it's in the product description then. There we go. This is it. To use cinematic depth of field in Unreal Engine 4.23 and above, you need to set post-processing quality to cinematic in engine scalability settings. Let's see if we can find that. Engine scalability settings. Engine scalability settings. Scalability. Uh, cinematic. Awesome. Is, mm, I just don't know if that is enabled or not, so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's why depth of field wasn't, wasn't working. I really don't know where I would have to do that. If there's a root projecting, I thought this was the, this was the place. But you know, what 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 do I know? <laughs> so we found the scalability. We just don't know how to. How to lock it in at level four, I guess. So I don't know. But you know, food for thought. Implementation is apparently relatively easy. I just, again, I don't know what he's talking about because I don't know the engine well enough. But I thought, yeah, that's that's something I'd, I'd love to be able to put into this project here. And then hopefully I can literally make that thing available while I'm walking around with my scarecrow here. So that's what I've been working on. And it would just be awesome to be able to press a button here and then just frame up something like that. I suppose um, I'm, I'm thinking that in uh, when we run this project here, if depth of field would do anything, if there was an effect there, uh, I would imagine that's when I, how I know that it's enabled. So because it doesn't have an effect, I'm assuming my setting is disabled or not quite cinematic. Yeah, because in the other one, uh, in the other plugin, I did see an effect and I should literally, no matter if I set it to the to either end, there should be a, a very pronounced effect here of, of depth of field. But because I'm not seeing anything, I'm, I'm thinking that's that's probably because my thing isn't uh, isn't actually set that way. Yeah, this is literally like super hot. Shoot this. Quickly put photo mode on and then see this thing come See this thing explode in slow motion. Oh, it's time now frozen. I don't know. Steve, good morning. How are you, sir? Yeah, it looks like time isn't actually going right now, so. <laughs> field of view. I'm looking at a couple of photo mode plugins, or uh, not plugins, they're kind of standalone projects for Unreal Engine, Steve. And a moment ago when we did this, this was happening in very, uh, in very slow motion here. But now it seems to be exactly frozen in time, which is also, no, there we go, there we go. <laughs> Maybe the physics kind of had to, had to kick off a little bit. I quickly capture a screenshot of that <laughs> and perhaps another one now i'd be interested to see what the resolution of this is like as well maybe see if we can find that uh, that folder where that is oh really 
I'm just reading your comment now that you have a huge lag between the chat and the video. How big is the lag, Christina? Let me come out of here and I'll see where the screenshots are. And Steve, I'm sorry to hear that the, that Brian's book is not available in Australia yet. I'm sure it'll it'll happen eventually, and it'll happen very soon. For the sake of simplicity, I didn't include a method which allows you to make a screenshots in a specific folder because otherwise project migration will be harder for you. I appreciate that. If you need this method, you can create a class. Yada yada yada. Where are the screenshots though? Where are the ones that I have just saved? Tell us, comma, documentation. Project folder saved screenshots. See, everything is provided. This is, I really appreciate it when people go and, hey, you probably have that question. Let's put it right on the front page. Project folder saved screenshots. Alrighty. Let's have a gander footage unreal projects this one was called photo mode saved screenshots haha <laughs> uh, windows there we go these are the ones that i've captured it's my handiwork the thing falling apart that's perfect 10 seconds Oh wow, that is that is a bit that is a bit much Christina absolutely I'm getting about three 10 seconds is a bit much. File info, and we can see it's also 1920 by 1080. Okay. But I would imagine that there's got to be a way that you can export this at a higher resolution. Or like make, make Unreal Engine create that at a higher resolution. So the animation that I've made, that was also with Unreal Engine. Don't know if you've seen that. I think I think it might still be on my computer here somewhere. It might be in the trash. <laughs> Sad robot. Unreal landscape animation. There we go. That's the one. So this I have actually exported in 4K. It does come with music, of course. And this was an image sequence. So this was my first attempt at making a keyframe animation in Unreal and then essentially not rendering it, it literally just exported it so it takes it takes less than one second per frame and that was at 4K with 4K frames. I was very impressed by that. The post-production, putting this together with the music and the fade in and out and with my logo and all, that took longer to do than actually rendering the animation out with Unreal Engine. And it's not perfect you can see that one of the things that is that it's just i guess it's just the way it happens when the level of details pop into place so there is this uh, this thing i think when you when we go around the corner you can see that on the on the um, on the mountains in the background you can see the geometry kind of popping in place they kind of they they change like that there's a point at which they change and it's a bit of a shame i wonder if there's a way that if you do and hire a cinematic export if you can do something that lets you say well uh, i'll 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 pre-grab that or something but you know I, I haven't found that out yet it does doesn't it yeah thank you christina absolutely i was super impressed by by how how i figured that out this was something i have actually not looked up in a tutorial i just had a fiddle and then this came out and i thought ah, oh, awesome it's a little bit more complex than a blender animation but it's just the 60 frame a second at 4k no rendering involved i thought my goodness that is just that's just cool do you know steve i'm sure that it just takes maybe a little bit of time for that book to be available like you say his other books are available maybe they they print a batch and ship them to australia maybe it takes a bit longer for the shipping plant in australia to get the data i don't know so it's an interesting one i was very surprised how quickly um 
it was actually available. So Brian said that he, we were just talking on Discord of uh, how he put the how he put the thing together, and then the next thing we knew, it was already available. So that's that's very impressive. I really like that. So maybe because that happened so fast, maybe the Australian thing is going to happen a little bit slower. I don't know. So, but yes, this is photo mode, and I'm very impressed by it. And as soon as I figure out how to put that into my Sinti scene, we'll we'll have a look at how that how that goes. I'm going to close this down now, and I don't think I'll save anything. I'll have a look at this other product now that I've not looked at before, and that is called Dynamic Skies. Also comes with a nice YouTube video. And interestingly, that is not showing up. Maybe it's called something else. <laughs> Probably it's called something else. Uh, see if we can find it. And that is something that I'd also like to use in some of the sets I've bought and I've looked at. It's just, I, again, I haven't even looked at this product yet. So let's have a look at, let's have a look together, shall we? Ultra Dynamic Sky, that's the one. So I could add that to a project. I might do that with a brand new project rather than replace the sky in a project that I have because I really don't know how how I would potentially do that. I mean, I can add it to my, you know, like the flying desert scene would be awesome if we could just add that to that project. It's a bit like the asset manager in Das Studio here, just, you know, better. <laughs> Yeah, Steve, data just travels, you know, takes longer to travel. <laughs> That's so funny. I might go and and uh, close my, close the scarecrow scene down here and create a brand new project for this just with the, uh, with the, just with the third person template. And then I'll add the dynamic sky to that as well. Or shall I just go? Maybe I'll maybe I'll try to make that. Maybe I'll open the desert scene, the desert scene, into which I've just added this. So that could, I don't know if that if and how that's going to work. That's one by a developer that I thought I'm going to buy his other project, which is about procedurally generated landscapes, but I decided not to do that. Um, hello, that's not what we wanted. Open Flying Desert, that's the one. Yes, and quite remarkably, Christina and I are getting our copy on the 24th already. That's very exciting. <laughs> that is so fast, man. So fast. Maybe while this loads, we can have a look at the description for this. Ultra Dynamic Sky, that's the one. And so some scenes, they come with literally no sky or just the default sky, uh, like this desert environment that comes free this month, which is how I made the animation. This is the, the, the thing I made the animation with. It's a huge set it's something like 64 square kilometers of area that you can explore how he did it is I, I was totally beyond me but if i go and play that scene then uh, i can i can literally uh, walk through this for for hours it feels like and i just don't reach the end of this oh really like a box so nice to see you buddy how you doing uh, new plugins are available and well you know let's um, let's just dismiss that and eventually it goes away so yes this is the this is the these are the skies that the product creates but they're all animated which is super amazing so if i have a landscape like the one i've just i'm going to show you in a minute it there's no sky in that so it looks all looks a little bit bland so the moment i go and 
add a sky like this it would be just so cool let me see if i can actually do that if i go and play this level this might take a bit longer now because it's uh it's a huge it's a huge level i'll go i'll go and play that in that window actually selected viewport and then we'll go and maximize that viewport there so this is that this is that environment and ah can't go up or down but there's currently there's no sky in here there's a like a basic sky but there's no clouds so if i'm thinking this would be the arizona desert or whatnot it would be so nice to have a proper uh, sky here do you know i've also experimented this is actually why i've set up this project i've also experimented with just doing the doing the controls for the animation uh manually like you know like this rather than doing a keyframe animation if i'm really careful i can probably wing it with my controller so the frame rate isn't quite 60 frames a second just yet because it's it's in the preview mode but really i mean for a holding loop or something this could be this would this would be just perfect And you can you can increase or decrease the the rate at which you fly as well. I just forgot how to do that. <laughs> it's all very very new to me. <laughs> that is very very nice, like a box. It's Stephen, right? Let me know how how do I address you? I I never know how to address people. Usually I use the 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 handle that we have, the moniker. Uh, but you know you're not really called like a box, so <laughs> I do know that some very cool effects you can get here very exciting ah yes we're also underneath the water so the water doesn't have collisions enabled yeah but hey anyway uh, the reason why um why i've opened that is because ideally i'd like to add that ultra dynamic sky to my scene but i have no idea how to do that so maybe i thought i'd share the process with you See if there's, there's an update history. Is there also a, kind of a how to do it with it? Or do we just drag it in? That is also possible. Ultra dynamic sky. Let me just go and put the link to that in the description. This is going to look a little bit dangerous now as I go and go. Sandcastle, hello. Thank you for watching on Mixer. Sadly, you can't hear us there. <laughs> I have a I have a stream actually on Mixer. Let me just show you this. It's my tribute to basically saying goodbye to Mixer. And I've got this thing running 24/7 now. It's just my little my little robot animation there. And I'm going to leave this running actually until Mixer pull the plug on it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so this is going to run on a 24 7 loop until I believe Wednesday tomorrow. At some point, Mixer are going to pull the plug. So it's going to be. It's such a sad, such a sad story. But hey. Uh, sky. There it is. Boom. Now you have it. Now you have a link to that project as well. So, uh, did we see? Did we see that's a change lock here? Do we have a little? How do we actually get this going here now? No, we don't. So we're on our own. He's also got a YouTube video on this, and uh, I thought that's uh, that's also partly why uh, why I bought it because I thought this uh, that that looks really nice. Maybe we can make it happen in our scene here. Let's see if we can. Uh, 
look at the sky currently this is the the atmosphere we have and we can switch that off okay cool that i like that so far so good uh would we find it in textures blueprints perhaps ultra dynamic sky blueprint oh there's a readme file all right let's have a look at it It, indeed it is today your time already it's tomorrow our time and we're all thinking well when are they actually going to do it they're in based in seattle so we're thinking potentially they're going to pull the plug um at midnight their time midnight uh pacific run editor utility widget hey see th these are tips that i really appreciate me as somebody who doesn't really know their way around unreal engine all that well what did he just say we need to do right click and run editor utility widget okay Let's see if we can work this out uh, run editor utility widget ha all right in engine readme now that just earned him an extra star we haven't even seen the product yet i'm already giving it five stars that's crazy hello and thanks for purchasing ultra dynamic sky this short readme should cover all the basics but if you have any questions or run into any problems please email me at everett gunther good stuff also here tool tips so this is i really appreciate that they yes and microsoft were, were the people who actually pulled the plug setting of using drag the ultra dynamic sky blueprint actor into your scene i thought so by default the built-in lights will be enabled if you want to use your own lights disable them that's cool change the time of day adjusting the clouds oh my goodness that is already super exciting can we even dock that here no we can't oh please don't dock it i don't know how to undock it uh dock it dock it here okay actually dock it dock it down here how's that yes ha i like it so sequencer we don't really need anymore so drag ultra dynamic sky blueprint into your scene shade is compiling that is perfectly normal i understand it's not showing up on the other hand is not perhaps i should have added it over into the scene actually that might make more sense or i should have been more patient ah there we go boom ultra dynamic sky blueprint streaming texture pool over a lot of megabyte budget that's uncool good documentation in my book always gets gets extra credit uh yes i'm not sure should it be that high i think it's a bit too high actually there world center that's probably um better it's might still be too high Well, uh, let's see what it looks like, shall we? That is seriously cool. It's a drag and drop sky with animated clouds. <laughs> that is kind of how I had hoped this was going to be. You just drag in a thing and you've got the effect that you're looking for. That is, that's impressive, huh? yes i suppose steve there is there is always that thing if you add content into it there's always this extra step that the engine needs to take for compiling shaders and whatnot that is absolutely true yes i found that as well sometimes there's no real the feedback but i mean if we consider what's currently happening in the background that is kind of you know do you know christina i the default download folder for unreal projects it's always the c drive and you have to when you create your first project make sure you go to a different drive because i mean 
with projects like these, it is just bizarre how we how we eat up storage space. I mean, a, a regular simple project like the first person shooter project is like five gigabyte or something and a project like this is like I, I don't remember but 10 15 20 easily just for one project so i had like five or ten projects that my my drive was completely full and then i realized my goodness there's 200 gigabytes just of just of test projects just that just piled up it it does doesn't it christina let's see if we can go and and uh make changes that is very impressive. Just go and put that in there. I need to figure out a way to collapse things more easily and select things more easily in the outliner. On all drives, yes, my goodness. That is crazy, isn't it, Steve? And then also, I mean, yeah, I understand that when you build the project, it'll probably optimize things and optimize the runtime, but still, I mean, my goodness. Madness Middles, hello, hello. Good to see you. Join the Unreal Party. I'm testing out Ultra Dynamic Sky by Everett Gunther. And this is the default setting. Let's see if we can let's see if we can figure out. There's animate the time of day. Now that we need to see. Day length, 10, I don't know, 10 what minutes, seconds. Let me just go set this to one. Let's see what happens. Does the day get shorter or longer? night length ah oh, you can set the night to be shorter than the day that is already very cool let's have a look at that day night cycle I remember when we played Subnautica, one of the things I found very annoying was that I perceived the nights to last much longer than the days. And that's probably not the case, but even that, so the day when the sun goes down, you've got this dusky period at either end, and then you have the pitch black period in the in the middle. And while that's accurate, that's really not a good gaming experience. I mean, the amount of times that we just had, that was a shadow caused by something right look at that i mean the light is changing the sunspot in the sky is not but the that's probably because i haven't put a setting out there yeah look at that stars or is it moving i can't tell i can tell that there's stars in the sky so it must be night <laughs> But I would, I, I think if I were to design a game that has a day and night cycle, I think I would like it to have maybe a slightly shorter night cycle than the day cycle. Just because otherwise players feel they have five minutes during daylight and 15 minutes during the nighttime. Okay, let me just go and put that back to not animate the time of day. <laughs> because I think it's linked to the actual scene light. I believe that is what he said. And I don't know if we can, oh, hello. I don't know if we can, if we can, you know. I don't know how to change that. Let's have a look at the in-engine in documentation here. How much are new drives these days, Christina? I'd love to invest into a four terabyte SSD. Setting up the sky new scene. If you want to use the built-in lighting setup first, make sure you delete from your scene and any existing lights for the sun, moon, and skylight, as well as any existing exponential height fog actor. Uh, okay. I am um, the, well, the, I thought I did that, didn't I? I kind of disabled all that. The default atmosphere here. Is there any other lights in the scene here? No. So I'm pretty sure I've done that. Drag and drop the thing into the thing. That's cool. By default, the built-in lights will be enabled. Woo -hoo! If you want to use your own light, 
and fork actors. Disable them. No, we don't want to do that. It's cool. Setting the time of day. Change the time of day property in basic controls to adjust the time of day. If you needed more, con need more control over the movement of the sun, you can also adjust the sun angle and sun inclination in the sun category. <gasps> really? There's a sun category on the thing? Sunrise event time and sunset event time. That's cool. Cloud appearance. All oh, right, cloud wisps. I bet there's other stuff to choose from. Clouds Voronoi. Oh, okay. The time of day variable is a single float from 0 to 2400. This is to simplify things like setting the animating the time of day. If you need, you can access the time as a real hours, minutes, seconds value using the get time from day in real time format function. Okay. And probably so much faster, right, Christina? That's the thing. That is what, what really gets me excited about Unreal Engine that the that what we perceive as render time is more like more like you know it's a second or so that's really cool yes that is what I'm interested in as well I'd like to bring in content that I have lying around import it into Unreal Engine and use that as the render engine that would be really cool adjusting the clouds come on let's see if we can do that in the basic controls category, you can make adjustments to the cloud coverage using the cloud density property. Okay, cloud density. Got you. Got you, Chief. Uh, 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 I can zoom in there so we can all have a closer look. Cloud wisps opacity. Do we see any like cloud? Cloud opacity. Oh, there we go. Cool. Uh, two, maybe? Uh, two maybe? Oh uh, no, I see. Maybe 0 0.5 then. Ah yes, I see. Changing that does that. That makes sense. That's one, that's zero. And then anything in between. That's cool. I bet this parameter can be animated as well. In the cloud appearance category, you'll find all the settings relating to the look of the clouds, from softness and shading effects to the noise texture used to generate the clouds. Uh, so this is the Voronoi thing. Maybe Voronoi smooth is another thing we can have a look at. Does not make a difference. Voronoi classic. Uh, okay, do I need to maybe play this? I, I don't know. Yes, good point, Christina. Sometimes there are just more important things to consider, aren't there? I mean, he has all kinds of other other exciting things here. Let's, let's see if we can we can make it rather than just changing a Voronoi pattern. Isn't there a way to to turn this into something completely different with presets? I had kind of hoped. There's maps, that's a demo map, uh, de okay, M materials, float curves, M meshes, textures, oh, okay. Different types of clouds. Then I tackle, got you, optimizing for performance. Performance, forget about it. So really, he has he has many other cloud effects in his uh, YouTube video and also on these things. There's stuff I haven't quite found that yet. So I suppose there's thicker classes. This I'd love to see that the aurora effect or that effect. So I don't know how easy that is to adjust. Uh, can we make, oh, there we go, that's the height layer. 
let's just randomly fiddle with parameters that's always a good idea wisp opacity maybe make that stronger oh i see we have the wisps and we have the other clouds i see sunlight intensity that's exciting there we go interesting stronger sunlight versus sharp and outer edge okay let's do that oh yes nice oh look at that you can do all kinds of things with clouds now that's nice isn't it you can go right ahead school yes tpn is super expensive yeah and um is there a way christina that you can just go and uh and archive to the cloud in a way it doesn't really help does it for local stuff especially if you're working for clients tiling layer oh there we go make bigger or larger clouds you can literally have so much fun with this tiling layer 2 ah yes nice one <laughs> oh, that is just so cool that would just that's just the start of my new 24 7 channel isn't it no no of course yeah that's that's a good point client stuff can't even go to the cloud i'm just thinking of all the amazing animations you can make fairly easily just with a tool like this no rendering involved just screen capture it with obs huh. Yeah, like here, this is a good example. I've now selected the landscape. In order to get back upstairs, isn't there a way to keep this folder with the scene always closed? I don't know why my trackball is making shenanigans. So keep it permanently closed, make it unselectable. But I don't know how to do that yet. cloud wisps texture cloud movement oh there we go let's make that faster all right cloud direction uh 90 backwards clouds the opposite way all right i'm a cloud spinner man that's nice do you know and in carrara Carrara was very similar to that. You can literally just just do all this by yourself. And then, of course, you have to wait for it to render and then you get to see the effect. So this immediate being able to see what's happening when you adjust parameters is just so cool. Oh, classic cloud noise type. Voronoi smooth. Oh, I see and uh, custom uh, what what can we do here cloud cloud wisps moon sprites Woo! okay that's probably not intended to happen quick make the moon come back i mean go away he did say something about the moon cloud shadows sun sun cast shadows yes absolutely moon default texture for the moon oh my goodness stars texture 
Very nice. I had so this one one thing I'm I'm kind of missing here is I thought there would be literally presets that I have like five or six material presets like things I just double click or drag onto or something and that would give me the suggestions I have in the that I see in the screenshots. That's kind of what I had anticipated but I can't seem to find it and he doesn't seem to mention this. This is enums here. I wonder if if that does something, uh, no. Let's not mess with that. Documentation, much appreciate the tip. Enums don't do that. The uh, maps, we've looked at that. Well, this is the demo map that he's built. Let's go and load that in. This comes with his thing already enabled. So yeah, I had the, I had my, I brought my own scene, but yeah, you can, you can have his scene. So that's a nice touch that you can literally just open that and, and see what happens. Maybe we can speed up the day night cycle a little bit and just animate cloud density. Yeah, let's do that. Where was that? Oh, the animate time of day. And you see, my trackball doesn't really, doesn't really obey my commands here very well. It could be that it's not seeing the uh, the receiver somewhere. <coughs> yes, I think you save this. What whatever you adjust here, as soon as you save the project, those settings are saved, Christina. And as also, you can animate these. I would imagine. Yeah, so you can do that. I just don't know if you can make your own presets, you know, but uh, you can you can make two levels and in one it would be day and in one it would be night. Possibly, yeah, maybe. If not, perhaps we should make some. <laughs> Like, you know, this is how the DAS marketplace has evolved. Somebody makes a product for the product, then somebody makes an add-on product for that, and then there's another person who makes an add-on product for the add-on product. Like, you know, texture sets. And the funniest was the camera sets, camera positions for stonemason sets. That would be, that'd be very cool. Yes, presets would be something I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to see that. But like you say, maybe this is an opportunity as I get more comfortable with fiddling around and seeing what the values do. This is a this is a channel already, isn't it? We just put some lo-fi music back in the background. In fact, let's let's do that right now. Just to demonstrate. Do I still have it open? Yeah, there we go. Gustav. I'm allowed to use this music, by the way. Yeah, air conditioning, that's a good song. Let's use that. Oh, that doesn't sound so hot. Thanks, voice meter banana. Who's audio engine needs to be reset every 12 seconds because it keeps crashing. There we go. There, this could be the channel. I'm sure you can, you can grab a collections, like a collection of values for the object he set up. So I would imagine you need, you take his object and then you just tweak the values and you then, you resave the object so that the blueprint, there'll be a second blueprint with different values on it. I'd imagine that's how it will work. Steve, I totally hear you. This is exactly how I feel. I have it and there's just so much in here. It's, it's a, such a complex project, such a complex program. There, this, this could be a whole channel. Hypnotic clouds. <laughs> and then $30 access fee, very important. I might drop him a line actually. This would be another good thing for 3D scrutiny, just making a little video about how to, how to use this and, and um, and just how does it how does it actually look when once you buy it? What does it look like inside the engine? So he's made a video himself, and 
he does explain the concept of it, but I don't think he explains how to actually use it. I might have to watch that later again. I just love being able to have this in real time. That's just so cool. success with that. Absolutely, Steve, that's exactly right. It is just practice that makes it perfect. I also feel reminded of that, that you have, especially with a, with a new thing that you look at and you say, I have so many questions from basic navigation to how do I even how do I even rotate around an object to how do I make something meaningful come out of it? And, and I like how Brian has described it, that you can literally say with, you can, you can probably with 20% of effort, you can probably get there to about 80%. And the last 20% are really difficult to achieve. Thing. See if we can figure that out. There's moon, there's stars, skylights. Maybe that's it. So no, that's not it. Skylights. Custom cube map. Height fog. Now I can't seem to find it. I don't think he mentions it here. I think Aurea Borealis, that's what it's called. Let's have a look at his video actually, maybe that gives it away. Maybe he does, he does give us a, uh, he does give us a, a clue there. Ultra Dynamic Sky. product video. Three minutes, come on. Let's have a look at it. See? Those types of effects are seriously cool. <laughs> Me too, Christina! I'll see if I can make that into a new channel. Or into at least a new loop or something. That'd be nice. Hi, I'm Everett Gunther and this is Ultra Dynamic Sky. Ultra Dynamic Sky is a flexible and easy to use sky system for Unreal Engine 4, providing dynamic moving clouds and time of day for your project in minutes. Its features include customizable multi-layered dynamic clouds with more than a dozen settings at your disposal. For example, you can adjust cloud coverage all the way from a clear blue sky to full overcast. The day and night animation system creates a complete dynamic time of day experience with a single click. The stars and the moon will come out at night. You can adjust things like their color and brightness, and you can even adjust the moon's phase. If only knew how. The sun and the moon can both project moving cloud shadows down onto your scene. If you choose, you can even enable aurora effects at night. And now, starting with Unreal Engine 4.24, Ultra Dynamic Sky is integrated with UE4's Sky Atmosphere function by default to provide more realistic coloring through atmospheric scattering. It also comes with built-in lights for the sun, moon, and skylight, so it's faster than ever to add realistic dynamic lighting to your scenes. Let's see how to do it. Getting started with Ultra Dynamic Sky is designed to be as simple and quick as possible. It's really just a drag and drop process. Here I am in a blank scene with nothing but a single ground plane. No lights, fog, or a default skybox. 
Navigate to the Ultra Dynamic Sky folder and find Ultra Dynamic Sky BP inside the Blueprints folder. Gotcha. Just drag that blueprint into the scene and there you go. The sky will default to using its built-in lights. So the whole scene has lighting synced up with the sky, just like that. What is RTFM? Now what let's take that? a quick Christina? overview of the settings on the blueprint. <laughs> Here in basic controls, you have access to things like the time of day, the overall brightness, and the saturation. There's also a checkbox here to disable the sky atmosphere integration and revert to the legacy coloring system that old versions of Ultra Dynamic Sky used. The Animate Time of Day section is where you can simulate a full day-night cycle. Just check Animate Time of Day and adjust the day and night length as you choose. The Cloud section has all the settings you'll need to tailor the clouds to your project. Coverage, opacity, lighting effects, and more. Here, you can also turn on animation as well to make cloud coverage change dynamically. Right, right. <laughs> The sun section covers both the look of the sun and the path it takes across the sky. This is also where you can make changes to the sun's light intensity. The moon and stars section has settings like color and intensity for both effects, oh. plus settings for how and when the moon crosses the sky. You can also select a custom moon texture if you want. The aurora section allows yeah, you to enable nice. or disable the aurora there we go. So there as well as change be an aurora their section. brightness. In the I skylight section, that. you can enable an option to recapture the skylight periodically to keep the ambient light in sync as the time of day changes. The exposure setting allows you to easily set a min and max camera exposure setting for your scene, or disable the setting completely. Here in the lights and fog section, you can override the built-in light and fog components and replace them with your own actors in the level, if you want, or you can disable any of them altogether. In advanced settings, you'll find some manual values which the blueprint normally takes care of on its own. Just disable the checkbox at the top of this section to use them. But note that most of these settings are only relevant when using legacy coloring. If you run into problems or need help achieving something specific, please get there in touch go. with me personally at evertgunther at gmail.com. I'll You're be happy man. to help. Thanks I really for watching. appreciate that. I hope you'll consider Ultra Dynamic Sky for your next project. Oh, absolutely. We're looking into it already. So Aurora, let's have a look at that. And sky and sun and moon thing. So there's stars, there's skylight, there's height fog, aurora, there we go. Use aurora, but it was just not showing up there, was it? <laughs> but do you know why, Chris? But do you know why, Steve? Because there are no more manuals. What happened to all the manuals? It used to be a job back then, writing manuals. basic and transform. Let's go and make that a bit smaller over here and a bit bigger down there. So if we don't animate it, what did he say we put into here? Is there anything like, you know, this was supposed to go from 1 to 2400 or 0 to 2400 to make it easier? If we don't animate it, what happens then? Uh, not much. Okay. And also, do you think the day length is faster when we set the number high, or is it going to be lower? We'll find out. Perhaps we'll leave him on 10. So cloud appearance, I think we're, we kind of know our way around that. Cloud movement, distribution, and shadows as well. Oh, come on. I need to have a look at where that, maybe that receiver's fallen down. Let me just give me one second. I'll just have a quick look there. I've had this before. Logitech devices, do you think they, they, they tell you it's about 10, 15 meters or something per device? And it's, of course, not the case. It's maybe like five centimeters if you're lucky. On my desk, I literally have an extension USB cable that puts the receiver within 20 centimeters in front of my mouse. Otherwise, the thing is just going to be not going to pick it up. I don't know why. It's, it's one of those things that it's just... There's so much stuff flying around and so much, 
Yeah, see, it hasn't, it's still not perfect. And it's literally, we're talking five meters away here in the other room. That is seriously disappointing. Look at that, now it's stuck completely. That is just super disappointing. So I need to do something about that. Probably another long USB extension into literally into this thing. That's, that's probably the only thing that's gonna work. But hey, we'll see. No, they haven't, really? Those are good books, Christina. Pearl. Oh, and PHP 4 and 5. I still can't believe that PHP 5 is, is literally end of life. That is something that I can't, I still can't get. Sun angle, shadows, moon. How do we set the time of day? Aurora, make more Aurora, man. We'd love to see that. Yeah, so I don't know, either of these things don't react the way I think they should or I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I need to, I don't know, something like bake lighting, play the scene, compile, whatever, as I just don't know enough about, about Unreal Engine, clearly. As far as I know, these changes that I make here, they should appear immediately, like they did with the cloud density and all that. If I change that, it updates immediately. But why my, the skylight doesn't really react to what I'm doing here. I don't really know. Like zero should be, there's no skylight intensity now, but it doesn't really react that way. So I don't know, that's not something I can, I can figure out. That's not quite obvious to me. Or how do I make it night? You know, you'd imagine animate time of day, you'd switch that off and then put in something like a, like a static, oh, there we go, time of day, that's the one. So if I make it uh, 2300, that's night. Yeah, there we go. Now we are, oh, there we have auroras. How exciting. All right, I figured it out. Awesome. Seven is already end of life. That's crazy. And where are we now, Christina? Is it, uh, are we talking PHP 8? Or are we skipping another generation because we had half started and we thought actually let's start again and make it better and not tell anyone? That's pathetic. Seven is already end of life, my goodness. But you know, this is also partly what what I'm not too keen on in the whole in the whole software landscape. 7.4, right? The everything changes so super fast and sometimes not so much for the better. I mean it's bad enough if the Fortnite people want you to install a software update 80 gigabytes every week because they make one small change to the game you know that's that's just that's ridiculous you have one hour imagine you're a tired parent and you have one hour a week your spare time you want to pick up your game you haven't played it for three weeks you switch it on one hour download you, you, that's that's unfair that's just that you cannot tell me that you're replacing every single asset in this thing and you need to deliver 80 gigabytes you can't tell me that that's bad enough but things like Every software update on my iPhone makes the phone slower and apps stop working and things, I guess my point is things change so fast. It is it is annoying me. I, I don't wanna be part of that pace anymore. I'm happy when things work and I like to actually enjoy working with them before having to, Blender, great example. Oh wow, I've just installed the latest version of Blender. No, you haven't because there's an update and you should really run the update. But it took me half an hour to install the new version and I've just got used to, forget about it. New version coming out next week. You think, ah, that's just, that's too much for me. I'm happy to work with old outdated software and upgrade and update in my own time. And sometimes when things are in the cloud, you can't really 
he kind of fought for that to happen. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. This is nice. I like it. What else can we do? Let's make it four in the morning. I'll make it two in the morning. Yeah, four in the morning. That was good. And then, of course, with so many software updates, there come the hardware updates as well. <laughs> Thank you, Mattis Middles. I appreciate that. Do you know, Steve, that's exactly what Julia did as well, which is why Brian's coloring book fits in so well. Brian ordered a set of uh, whatever it was, 36, 72 colored pencils. And, you know, notice his book is not available on Kindle. It's supposed to be on paper, and you're taking a pencil, and you're just coloring in paper. It's very good. It's very nice. I can imagine, yes, that is expensive, PHP 4. I don't want to lose PHP 5. I get these messages from my local web servers all the time. I have a local web server that runs CentOS 6, also very much end of life, coming right at you. And it's I haven't installed PHP 7 on that because this is not, not supported. I think Remy have one, but it didn't install well or whatnot. So I was thinking maybe I can uh, grab it from source, but it all just went messy and I just, I just couldn't do it really. So I'm still running an outdated 5.4, I think. It's not even 5.6, I think. Yeah, I think it's still 5.4 on my local web server. And it works fine. It's an old WordPress theme, the P2 theme, and it just, you know, it just does the trick. It just kind of works. Ah. Oh. So that's that sky, and that's how we add it to a new project. You know what? Let's just try and load this thing into my little farm scene and see if we can turn the the aurora lights on and, and make the farm scene a night scene. Maybe I can make that happen. I may be unsuccessful doing that. I'm already unsuccessful coming out of full screen. Oh, there, there we go. Perfect. I'll go close this down, and I don't save things here. Everett Gunther. That is very nice. La Beret. And let's go to let's go to this was this is a free asset this month as well. The meadow thing. That is seriously cool. Maybe we can do it with that. I think this is my farm here. Aptly named third person two. Let's see how difficult it is to add that sky to that. I should have done it from here before this thing launches. Ultra Dynamic Sky, add to project. And I can do that while the project is already launched, so it doesn't have to be closed or anything. Add that to here, add to project. And then it goes, downloads it and puts it into your project folder. And in here, I can see it, Ultra Dynamic Sky. So right now, this scene comes with its own, this scene comes with its own atmosphere and sky. This is what it looks like as we've as seen earlier. My scarecrow can run around and the sky looks fairly cool already. It's got these it's got these cartoony type clouds. But let's see if we can add our own ultra dynamic sky to the to the whole thing. That'd be nice. Let's see. And let's see what it's what it's like. All the particle effects. That's very cool. Let's see if we can make it happen. So so much stuff here. Atmospheric fog. There's a light source. I suppose we'll take that away or make that invisible.
Then there's the sky sphere. Let's take that out as well. And the sky light. These are buildings here. We don't need to worry about the buildings. That's one thing I've noticed about the Sinti assets, by the way. They're not, I mean, they are flaws that I suppose real game developers might not might not like like scale isn't high on their agenda i mean some objects that they build i guess they've built them in oh come on in isolation so that like a hot dog cart or something is extremely large so they're like basically if your character is in in front of the cart the cart's kind of going up to here and that's not how big a hot dog cart is a hot dog cart kind of goes to your waist somehow and it's just it's small things like that that i suppose you have to adjust So anything that's a light and atmospheric fog, he says, switch that off. Oh, come on, move, man. <laughs> it's getting to the point that this thing is no longer, no longer moving at all. Okay, there we go, that's, that's that. We still have the clouds. There's so many clouds. SM generic, those are all actors, really? Generic cloud. Oh, come on, mouse, we do need your help here. I can't do this without you. Uh, can we disable all of them? Yes, there we go, ha ha. That's nice. So, as Everett suggests, head into the blueprints folder and take ultra dynamic sky bp and pop that right into here shader compilation not necessary and there's everett sky uh, sadly i suppose also his thing is now inside that folder Oh no, don't do that. That's, you know, that's cool. We don't need to do that. There, so, um, basic controls time of day let's make it again uh, two in the morning oh, there we go that's cool S stars come out i think we had this last time that it's just a little bit too high so let's go move it down a bit is that is that avoiding the fog no it's not There's still a light source in the scene that I don't quite know what it is. Oh, look at Chill Dog. Absolutely, tomorrow's the day. He is so right about that. Maybe make it four in the morning. Actually, no, make it two in the morning. That's quite nice. And let's add that Aurora effect. Moon, stars, height, fog, Aurora. Use Auroras. All right. Uh, do we see Auroras? There's still something in the sky that I don't really know uh, what it is or where that, where that light comes from. Yeah, those are both switched off and they came with the default map here. Oh well. Oops. Have we crashed?
Oh, do we not have a player start in our thing? I thought we did. No, I guess we don't. I'll add one here. I thought we had a player start. Now we do. But also, now we don't have the, the night sky anymore, do we? What happened to the night sky? I don't understand. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. <laughs> yeah, now it's like the daylight scene again. I'm not sure if I need to compile anything else here. There we go. This is the, this is the light scene. Do I need to bake the lighting? Is that what I need to do? Usually, if that is necessary, there's a thing that, that just tells me to do that. But hey, I don't really know much about Unreal Engine, so there's probably a thing where you just say, bake it in and then it makes it happen. But I don't really know where that is. Or it's like in Blender that you have that this is actually the thing that that's the, the preview thing and then there's something else in the in the in the rendered version of the game that is possible. Hey, food for thought, we'll figure it out. Well this looks moody so far. I like it. Oh, there we go. That took a while. Yeah, that took a while. That took a while. My goodness. I wonder what happens if we can now do this. This is already a nice scene. I do, I do like that. Now, can we play the scene? No, it's daylight again. Why is that? Do we need to build it? Build lighting only. Let's let's try that. Um, whatever. Nice. Sure. If you need to contact the internet to uh, build lighting, that's uh, interesting. And they're auroras, indeed. Yes. <laughs> Come on, we want to play the scene once with uh, with the auroras and the scarecrow running around the fields. That would be nice. Do you remember when we looked at the office scene, the Sinti office scene, and I updated one light source? There was this thing about uh, rebuilding the lighting, and that took quite some time as well. Very nice experiments. Aha! Import built static lighting. Encoding textures. This is so... Hmm. Completed. All right, come on. It's also animation stopped working. Oh! Both a legacy atmospheric fog and new sky atmosphere wants to register. Light mass will not consider the legacy component. Good, thank you. No importance volume found and the scene is so large that the automatically synthesized volume will not yield good results. Please add a tightly bounding light mass importance volume to optimize your scene's quality and lighting build times. Thanks, I'll get right on that. I'm, you know, thank you for the tip. That's really valuable information there, unreal. But now that we're back live in the viewport, uh, lighting obviously has not built the way we wanted it, so... 
There's got to be something else wrong there. Maybe build everything. Build and submit. That's a good idea. Let's go and submit that immediately. That's a good idea. Free compile static visibility. Man, put more random options into random menus. That's going to help everyone. So I don't know then, really. Standalone game default player. Yes, this this doesn't all doesn't make that much sense, right? Yes, it would be, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, I thought I did. Um, I thought this was this is whoops this is as uh, as night as I. There's still a light that I don't know where that comes from. Oh, do you know, let's try something else. Let's try, because um, I don't really know what's wrong with this, but since it is fairly easy to import our new sky thing into an existing scene, why don't we try opening another one? <laughs> I bet they did. I'll go and I won't save that just in case there's something that's not quite it's not quite working here. Uh, there's another one that's another freebie that came with the marketplace uh, this month and that was this one here meadow. I think that's still uh, the the old version but let me go and and open that with the with the new engine so I think it, it may have to just make a copy or rewrite it this is free for july here this this asset it's a beautiful small just a just a geometry uh, just a, just a nature pack environment meadow environment set and meadow environment set map aren't they the same let's try this one new plugins yes they're not working Leave me alone. Das to Unreal. It's a good plugin. But it doesn't work. For, for me, it doesn't work. I must have the, the tick box enabled where it says make it not work. I just haven't found where to undo that. So in the demo videos that looked all nice, the um, grab a Das character, run a script in Das Studio, it imports it into Unreal Engine, Textures, everything works fine. Skeleton retargeting, very simple, very easy. So all I get is an error message and nothing working. <laughs> Sadly, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's it's me somehow. Oh, audio is out of sync now. That's crazy. That's that's uncool. Loading Meadow Environment Set. Come on, Unreal, you can do it. We are asking a lot of our computers, I must say. This is why I need to render out those clouds and so we can cut to them and just look at clouds while Unreal is rendering this. I might do that later. Some night clouds, some day clouds. Hopefully, maybe just a changing day-night cycle. That would be cool. Come on, compiling shaders. And then we'll see how that ultra sky thing is going to fit in with this scene. A friend of mine runs a workshop in several places around the world. Nepal or... Um, uh, I think New Zealand and it's a group of people who say hey look so it's an exercise really that he says we go on this trip together it's like 12 people he oversees it and everyone is in the woods for literally three days by themselves in a different part of the woods and he goes around and just checks in with them three days they have to give away their mobile phone when they start and literally 
deal with yourself and just with you and nature and nothing else and then after three days they come back together and discuss the experience and it was a little weird he says when he started but it is so popular for him now it's unbelievable how many people like to escape this constant connection thing and this constantly quickly checking this and the other it's nice to have this to have this artificial break from that i like the idea do we have a player start we do perfect that means we should be able to do we have unreal guy perfect we have unreal guy in there that's also awesome and we'll go and put him into this viewport here now let's see if we have an atmosphere oh yeah let me show you what it looks like currently so this is the this is the free asset pack currently free until the end of the month very nice i think this is called meadow and it already has a sky but i'd like to see if i can add the ultra dynamic sky in there that would be nice this it, this is just a demo map so it, even though it looks like there's roving hills don't go further than here because this is where the level ends <laughs> Many of these assets have a demo level that the developer put together so that you can see what the effect is. Because if you wouldn't know any better, and if you just look at the hills in the background, you'd think, well, this continues on forever here. And you can make it happen that way. But uh, yeah, if you play this like that, it's, um, it's uh, careful, you'll just fall into oblivion here. <laughs> it does, doesn't it, Christina? It looks really exciting. And the other thing I like is that if you look closely, we have this, this nice shot here, everything moves. There's always this subtle movement, everything animates, it's just so beautiful, I like that. <laughs> Free for the month of July. Julia's just experienced, Julia's just got a new iPad because her old one got slow and the new iPad supports the Apple Pencil. And I bought that last year and that was, that was nice. And they have, you know, they've made it really nice. So it's, uh, it's almost, ah, okay, it can't sink into the water. That's fine. That's, <laughs> that's fine. It still looks very nice to have a, have a body of water. Here. And she thought, oh, great. Now I can use it on my on my ipad as well and uh, she loved it she absolutely loved the idea even though it was digital she really likes just coloring things in and drawing things and doodling it really helps her mind relax with procreate on the ipad that's a nice little uh, drawing app there we go sky and fog ha ah, perfect we can just switch it all off everything goes black that's precisely what we want and all we need to now do is dismiss this because we know that we need to hello keyboard seems to have the same problem as the mouse i'll just need to add my sky into the thing from the lab area do you remember the game database i've built for my games collection i might rewrite that and have another thing just like that for 3d assets i might not put the das assets in there but certainly these ones here because if you don't know what something is called it'd be really nice to have a standalone database that has that meadow add to project yes who makes the star zero six christina Ultra Dynamic Sky. All right. Blueprints. And oh, there it is. Boom. Sky. Give it a second. X-Pen, oh yes, of course. 
<laughs> Good, yes, yes, so you should. Oh, he's still working in the background here. I can tell that, that nothing's moving, so it usually hasn't crashed. It's just, I bet he's just updating things. It looks weird when you when you're used to seeing such a real dynamic world and all of a sudden everything is is just static that's just but it looks like it's getting brighter come on Lighting needs to be rebuilt. One unbuilt object. Okay, let's take care of it. Build. Uh, build lighting. Starting up swarm connection. Wonder what it does. I mean, it was asking me to open a port, so it does use the cloud to build the lighting. What? What? What does it do? How does it work? <laughs> I wonder. Just pouring myself another nice cup of coffee here. Oh yes, both the legacy and the yeah, great. That's cool. I'm happy about that. Map check found some errors. That's cool. We're we're good with it with the errors. We're we're totally fine. Okay. So now we have ultra dynamic sky in the meadow. And the roving hills. I nearly bought this thing and just decided not to get it, even though it was it was great value. There was a tool that lets you generate a landscape like this, huge landscape, with procedural techniques. So all you need to provide is a height map and the and then add shaders accordingly and there's one which is a grass shader and one was a tree shader and then you can paint in your roads and you just literally click a script button and the thing goes ahead and does it for you it's unbelievable it's 120 dollars though and on sale it was 60 i nearly got it but i thought you know what i i need to learn more of the basics of of how to use Unreal before I can really make uh, reap the full benefits of those things. Well, let's see if we can get a night sky with auroras here. Basic settings, time of day, maybe make it two in the morning. Yes, that's good. And then at the bottom here, the skylight, height fog, aurora. Use auroras. Aurora intensity, make that, yeah, one or 0 0.8. All right. Ah. Is this this so this is the same thing that we had already? Do I need to build the lighting again? Hmm. Do you know, Steve, this is exactly what I thought. I was thinking I, I put it all in my shopping cart because I'm missing kind of a um what's it called? A wish list feature. So I put all the interesting things in my shopping cart and then I looked at it and I was thinking do you know what what are the chances that I really sit down with this and generate procedural things? And I had to say to myself, do you know what? Slim to none. And I'm glad I didn't do that and instead invested into the DAS2 Unreal plugin. Ah, so this is interesting. This is exactly what we had with the with the Sinti map. In the preview, I can see it. But the moment I play the level, it doesn't want to work. 
even though I have rebuilt the lighting, so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. Could maybe just uh, I'll build all these things. See what that happens. See what see what happens. So we build that pre-compile static visibility. Build only visibility was enabled, but pre-computed visibility is disabled. Abort build. Okay, well I, I don't I don't really know what I'm doing then. <laughs> and if the play button doesn't work, I I can't I I don't know. Standalone game. Play this level in a new window that runs in its own process. Okay, great. Let's try that and um, save and we'll see what happens that is the last thing we shall try <laughs> yes i suppose even if the asset is free you still have to complete the checkout process So this runs in its own process now, so this the performance should be a little bit better. But the lighting is still is still weird. He's also he's reacting very weirdly to light currently. I can see his metal balls on the inside. Yes, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but nevertheless it's another exciting little puzzle to figure out. Oh uh, yes, you're gonna have lots of fun with this meadow if you can if if you get the space there, Christina. The other one was the canyon thing of the that's the asset I used for the animation, for the 4K animation. That is also very nice. That is huge. If you play that level you can just literally walk around there for hours. Yes, I wonder how we do that. I wonder how we get how we get our our night sky in the playable version of the game. Uh, there is a I think there is a link. Uh, I'll, it's on the marketplace, Steve. Let me see how I get. How do I even get out of here? <laughs> oh. Uh, play. How do we quit that process there? Whew. Let me give you a link. It's on the Unreal Marketplace, so it's just das to Unreal. Das to Unreal, that's the one. By David Vothanel. And it's it's really interesting to install it. So you have to buy it, and then in the in your Unreal launcher, under your library. So once you've purchased it, it comes up down here in your vault, and you just select Install to Engine, and that means you have to then relaunch the thing. And so you, you, it just tells you, it relaunches the engine, and then you have an extra button up here. So I think in my case, I haven't enabled it, but as soon as you install it to the engine, I think then under here, under plugins, you, so edit plugins, you add over there, and then you've got it, and you enable it. And then it says Unreal Editor must be restarted. And at that point, you get a button up here. And when you click that, it will install the script into Das Studio already. So that's quite nice. You don't have to patch something. It, it, there, it, there's a pop-up box that says, please copy a DLL file manually into the plugins folder in Das. But in my case, it happened automatically. So I didn't have to do that. And then you have in Das, you have an option under edit. It says send to Unreal. And it just magically pops up in a project that you already have open. <laughs> Thank you, Mattis Middles. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, what do I think of the add-on? Well, it I tried it about 10 times. Nine times it didn't work. It came up with the same error message. Once it did work, and it worked remarkably well. So I saw the character in Unreal 
and it was you know i thought that was that's nice uh, texture seemed to work fine um and I believe I did something wrong and I had to start again to apply the animations properly and uh, sadly that was then when it stopped working and since then I haven't got it to work so um, yeah I, I don't know if he's working on something it's a setting with my system we can try it out maybe I can I can show you the error since this isn't working here the light thing I might just go I might just go and uh... oh come on mouse please this is seriously uncool in fact, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do it together, shall we? I'm glad I'm your hero, Madness Middles. So let's go and... Uh, it, it is installed into the engine. Yeah, perfect. So I don't need to do anything. I'll, I'll create a brand new project for that. <laughs> this is... I'm really not used to mouse performance being that bad. Yeah, maybe it'll work now that you're all watching. Maybe it does. <laughs> so I'll create a third person project, a brand new one. It's a third person thing. And I'll call that maybe DAS2 because I remember DAS1 didn't work so well. So I'll go create that. DAS2, all very nice and descriptive. I'm sure I'll remember next week what this project was all about. It, it is. <laughs> Why is that, Command Zero One? Welcome, by the way. Manage plugins. <laughs> it grows on you after a while. Enable DAS to Unreal. Must be restarted. Perfect. Restart whatever you like. As many times as you like. While you're doing that, let's go and open up DAS Studio. <laughs> I wonder if that's the people who installed it, who who, who designed it. Vista, Vista Vibes. That is, that's actually very... It's very true. So we've got this thing up here. That's awesome. We like it. Mouse, please come back just for another 10 minutes or so. Jesus. And I've made... So this is the version, this is the release version of Das Studio with the bad viewpoint performance. Are you serious? Man, work, goddammit. Do, do we have another mouse? Does that work? Better. Oh, here, look at that. $80 trackball, shit. $10 mouse with a lemon design, works flawlessly. Okay, thanks Logitech. This is a little bit un uncool and unreal actually. Oh no, also doesn't work. Well, that could be my trousers here, there we go. It's, it's, it's. <laughs> Balancing your mouse on your trouser leg, not recommend it, but if it works better than your $80 trackball, G8 mail. And this is the guy that I have prepared earlier. And that's just the the Genesis 8 guy with shorts on. And I believe with my thing already open, all I need to do now is go to edit. Oh, this is just as bad as the other one. Okay, good. I take it back, Logitech. Your devices are all awesome. Please keep buying companies like Blue and Streamlabs because it makes the world a better place, doesn't it? So this happens, and then I go back into Unreal where this happens. Failed to find any bone hierarchy. Try disabling the import as skeletal option to import a rigid mesh. Import failed. That's that's as far as I get. But as I said, this is this is one time today that it did actually work and put the character into my project. But yes, that's that's all I get, I'm afraid. Do you know, wouldn't that be nice? Bring the Blender UI into the 21st century. I love it when menus change around. I, I wish we had new menu changes in every version of Blender just to confuse everyone. 
you gotta wait until you gotta wait until everyone has caught up with how the menu works now and then make a change that throws everyone off like a complete change let's see i don't know if i i don't think i've changed that christina it's this was the default fbx version uh, 2014 Oh, come on, mouse, this is terrible. Yeah, I think this, I don't think I've changed that. This was kind of the, the default binary. I can, I can always try this one here, 2013. Maybe I'll try that for a laugh. If, if my mouse lets me click the accept button. No, I know, I know. I'm joking. I'm joking. The, the in, since the alpha of 2.8 until the one that we have now, I, I like that. I like that. But I guess my point is, Christina, I'd like for it to stay this way. I don't want the Blender UI to change again. I've just gotten used to it. Eh, no bone hierarchy. Yeah. So I don't know. There's something, something's amiss, and I'm not entirely sure what. But hey, that's for another day to sort out. Uh, for now, we'll we'll figure out how to how to actually get my mouse to speak to me again, or more importantly, to speak to the computer and the Stream Deck. Also, not quite speaking to me anymore. What a shame. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go and say goodbye today, guys. Thank you so much for dropping by and joining me in my new studio. I guess some teething problems like the, you know, mouse connectivity, stream deck con connectivity, and comfortability of the chair. I must say, I can, the other one was bad for my back. This one's bad for my, for my bottom. Um, perhaps I should change halfway through so I have a bad back and a back bottom at one point, or I find something more comfortable. It's, it's lovely to see you. I hope I'm gonna be here more often and do more 3D stuff as I get more into the Unreal Engine. And uh, maybe we can make this project happen that I kept talking about, the, the little, you know, putting characters in place. And it's gonna be a steep learning curve for me, but I don't think I'm gonna go back to work anytime soon. I, I'm still waiting to hear back from my doctors, but as you well know, the, the COVID crisis, Florida is a hotspot. Yes. So, yes, I think it's it's not such a good idea to go back to work. I had kind of expected to go back on the 1st of August, but I don't think I'm going to do that. So, yeah. And the, so going forward, what I'd like to do, and even this is probably also the wrong decision, but I'm, I'm thinking of uh, doing the 3D streams here and then doing game streams over on YouTube. And that's that's why I'd like to kind of split it. And I'm not sure if I can go back to daily game streams over on YouTube, but uh, like, you know, two, three times a week, that would be nice. At the same time, 10 o'clock in the morning, AM, 10 AM Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, play something like, you know, City Skylines and all that. Uh, maybe, yeah, three, four times a week, something like that. And then two days a week, at least, I'm trying to do something along the lines of 3D. There's lots of little projects that I'd like to build uh, or even just check things out. And it's always nice to hang and do this with you. So the, my, my plan is then going forward, having this like a really low-key uh, environment where I basically do a screen share and we can have a chat while we do that uh, and then on on YouTube it can be uh, you know it can be more like a like a party type atmosphere to get this to get the day started that kind of helps me and my energy I'll see if I can see if I can keep it up anyway thanks for joining me have a wonderful evening and uh, I hope I will see you very soon take care bye bye <music>